When I got on the plane to Mexico, I expected to get outside of my comfort zone and to experience many new things. I would learn a new language, explore a new city, and possibly even make new friends. Something novel that I did not expect to happen though was to take a visit to a Mexican hospital, which is precisely what happened in the middle of my trip. Hey there friends, I'm Matt, a joyful human who's working to live life on purpose. On this channel, we discuss how to live life more purposely, mindfully, and effectively. Today, let's discuss the life lessons that I gained from an allergic reaction in Mexico. The first lesson from this experience is one that I gained from just about every single thing that happens to me, a reminder of the amount of blessings that are present in each and every moment. Sometimes it's the things that are rather inconvenient in the present moment that shine the brightest light on those things for which to be thankful. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but here's some of the items that went right on that day when I had an allergic reaction. When the reaction happened, I had just finished up my first week of Spanish lessons. That said, my Spanish wasn't quite up to snuff. Okay, I'll be more honest, my Spanish was horrible. I was not even able to communicate four words in a row to the man at the front desk about what exactly I needed. Without Google Translate at my disposal right there on my phone, I don't really know how I would have been able to communicate that my throat was literally closing up at that exact moment. If this was another time, if this was another place where I wasn't even able to have that internet, I actually could have died. So for that, I'm so thankful for Google Translate. As the 67th largest city in Mexico, Oaxaca is not necessarily a bustling metropolis. That said, it boasted a surprising number of hospitals within a 10 minute walking distance from the restaurant where I was eating. When I imagine if this situation would have happened in a more remote place, I cannot help but be so incredibly thankful. This helped me realize that no matter how bad a situation may seem in the present, it can almost always be worse, so there's no detail of the story that is too little to be thankful for. When I was a kid and I was tested to see the severity of my peanut allergy, it took just half a peanut for me to go into complete anaphylactic shock. I have these vague memories as a kid of my throat closing up, of everything getting so constricted in my breathing and in my head, and then me eventually blacking out before waking up sometime later thanks to the work of the doctors. Now, I don't know exactly the amount of peanuts that I ate that day in Oaxaca, but what I do know is that the reaction came on in a way that was much slower than what I had experienced in the past. That gave me time to both monitor my reactions to be able to see exactly how I was feeling the entire time, and to make my way over to the hospital where I was feeling clear headed the entire time. There wasn't any moment where I really felt my throat starting to close up in a really quick way. And for that, I'm so, so thankful. If I had actually liked the flavor of the dish, the speed at which I would have consumed what turned out to be a deadly concoction would have been much higher. And there's a high likelihood that a lot more would have gotten into my system. But the truth of the matter is I thought it was absolutely horrible. And I was thinking about what a mistake it was to order that dish even before I learned that there were peanuts in there. Maybe it was my taste buds working to protect me, maybe it was just dumb luck, but every single bite that I ate of that dish I thought was absolutely horrible. And you know what? That may just be the factor that saved my life. This reaction was 100% my own fault. I went to a restaurant that day hoping to be able to try the famous mole of Oaxaca. I ordered my food, I didn't tell anybody about my allergy, and it was only after taking a few bites that I thought, huh, maybe there's something in here, I should probably ask about that. When I asked the waiter, he came and he told me, yes, there were indeed my kryptonite. There were indeed peanuts in the dish. The first time that I ever traveled alone was in 2016 after I graduated. I spent five weeks in Southeast Asia, one of those being in Southern Thailand. Especially for that week, I was so nervous. I remember having this piece of paper that I would show to literally every single person that said, I am allergic to peanuts. Does this have peanuts in there? Just to make sure that I wouldn't have a reaction. Over the years though, as I've been blessed to be able to travel to a multitude of other places, and nothing bad had really happened, I became less and less nervous, more and more complacent. This mindset shift has had some incredible benefits both on my travels and on my life. It's made me more spontaneous. It's made me stress a lot less. And I've tried some things that I probably would have been very, very unlikely to do because of this change in the way that I think about the world. But at the same time, there's a fine balance between being carefree and being complacent. I wanna make sure that I don't go all the way to that area of complacency. Because after all, how we do anything is how we do everything. That can seep into other parts of my life, which is something that I definitely don't want to happen. This event was a wake up call to remind me to stay present and alert in all that I do every single day. A chance to practice really getting into the moment, enjoying every single breath and heartbeat. The end of the last point actually relates quite well to this one, being an active participant in each present moment. Before the reaction happened, I was simultaneously trying to film my eating experience listen to Harry Potter in Spanish while also reading along with the text and somehow thinking about what was coming next in my day as well. Suffice it to say, I was not there in the present moment. I'm surprised I was even able to taste anything because my mind was going in so many different directions. 
But from the moment that I learned that I had eaten peanuts, I was immediately thrust into the present. I was focused quite literally on every single breath that I took, every swallow of saliva, every single heartbeat. And so often those are things that I take for granted. By so often, I mean almost all the time. While my mind is going in different directions, my body just keeps on going without me even having to put in any sort of effort there. But it's these brushes with mortality that help me to realize and remember that those things are precious resources. Those things are limited in scope. One day they will end. And with that, I'm able to appreciate life so much more. And with that too, all these little insignificant little factors, all these little distractions, they melt away because I realize what really matters. Just this blessing that I'm able to just continue living. It was also a chance for me to be able to see how all the practice that I had been doing and living mindfully was really working. Those moments where I really thought about, man, maybe I'm going to die, I was able to focus in on the present. I was able to focus in just on my breath, the meditation practice that I've been doing, the gratefulness practices. It's really only whenever I'm tested, really whenever things aren't going quite well, that I'm able to see any progress that I would have made and also the areas where I still need to make improvements in the future. Growing up in the States, I had this belief that we were the best at everything. Everything that we did was the right way and it was the yardstick upon which everything else should be measured. Maybe that's something that everybody experiences about their own country. Maybe it's just a silly thing that we Americans do. Maybe it's just a me problem, but honestly, that's how I used to think. As I've been blessed to be able to travel to more places and experience different cultures, I now see the ignorance of that statement. I also see the self-centeredness and self-importance of it as well. When I went into the hospital in Mexico, I found extremely caring people. I found extremely knowledgeable people. I found people who literally saved my life. And for all of that, I walked out of there paying a thousand Mexican pesos, the equivalent of about $50. This was another example where maybe the way that we do things in the States isn't always the best way. I want to make sure that I explain too that it isn't that I don't love the US. I absolutely do. And I'm so incredibly thankful for all the opportunities that it's provided me in life simply by being born here. Honestly, I can't imagine life any other way. But at the same time, I don't think there's any country now or any time throughout history that has ever been the best at every single thing. I just don't think it's possible. Each culture, each people, they bring something that's so unique, whether it's a characteristic, an innovation, a food, a language, etc. And that's actually quite a beautiful thing. It's allowed me to find a greater appreciation for the US and actually all other countries. When I think of something as the best, it's hard for me to get into that mindset of changing things. It's hard for me to get into that mindset of actually improving the thing. And also I take those items, I take those characteristics that I like for granted so much more often. When recognizing the flaws of a thing alongside its good parts, I find it easier to be able to find an appreciation for what it provides, as well as the opportunity to find real meaningful change, real meaningful improvement. Blind love and devotion turns into a viewpoint that is more realistic, which yes, there are some parts that are unpleasant, but there's also an appreciation that is more genuine, it's more real. At least that's what experiences like this have taught me. I used to be super uptight, rather angry, and not always the pleasant to be around. Just ask some of the friends who have known me for some years now. I took life so, so seriously, and that caused a rigidity in the way that I live my life every single day. But laughing at life, even in the most dire situations, maybe even especially in the most dire situations, has completely changed things for me. Compared to getting stressed and adding that energy to a situation, laughing at life gives the opportunity for it to actually become better. We never have only two options, but for the sake of this example, let's say that we do. Option one is that we get stressed and we add that energy to whatever's happening. Option two is that we just laugh at simply whatever is happening to us in that present moment. In my experience with option one, it almost always makes the situation worse. Not only are we adding that energy that then it goes to everybody else around us negatively affecting them, but it also lessens our ability to be able to critically think through and be able to work through whatever is happening in life. On the other side, at worst, what I found is that by adding that joy, by adding that laughing at life, we keep the situation neutral, but actually in more cases, we actually make it better. Not only do we make it so that everybody else is more calm, it pacifies the situation, but it also has helped me to be able to think more clearly through whatever's happening and come to a more creative, come to a more effective solution. In this particular story, there was a moment where I couldn't help but laugh. Communicating through Google Translate, the doctor told me that he was going to go out of the room to go get a shot of some antihistamines. I figured this is par for the course, so I waited a few minutes for him to come back. When he walked into the room with a shot, I started rolling up my sleeve just like this in anticipation of being able to get the shot. At that point, he stopped and he said, no, 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 that's not what we're doing, in Spanish, of course, and then he leaned over and pointed to his butt. He said, yep, that's where you're going to be getting the shot. I almost started dying laughing. I really believe that there's humor that can be found in our lives in every single moment if we look hard enough. And with regular training, we can work to make that our default reaction to things. 
Now, you might say, Matt, easier said than done. And to that, I agree. Most things are easier said than done. But just because it's a difficult practice doesn't mean that it's not a worthwhile thing to attempt to do. A tip that has helped me put that mindset into action is to think about how I'm going to view the event that is happening in a week, a month, a year. It doesn't really matter the length of time as long as it's in the future. From that perspective, the seriousness of a situation is almost always less dire than what I imagine it to be in that present moment. I often find myself laughing at what past Matt was thinking or doing because at the very least, I'm so happy that I lived to be able to see the end of that experience. I lived to be able to look back on that experience and laugh. It takes practice. And if you're like me, you're gonna stumble a lot, especially at the beginning. But in my experience, it does get better. And I believe in you that you can do it too. The way that I used to take experiences that I labeled as negative in the past was to allow them to cultivate fear, make me more jaded and or promote a victim mentality within my own head. Pity from others was the prize that I was seeking whenever I would relay these stories that I would often label as unfair. But I now know that there's a better way. Essentially everything that happens to me in life is neutral and it's up to me to come up with my interpretation of the event, my reaction to it, and ultimately the way that it's going to affect my life moving forward. There's more things that are within my control than I think, but there's more things that are outside of my control than within my control. Let me repeat that because that's been a fundamental idea in my life lately. There's more things that are within my control than I think, but there's more things that are outside of my control than within my control. That said, I choose to take lessons from every single thing that I experience in life, especially those things that were outside of my control. I take what many, including my past self, will label as poor, unfortunate events, and I turn them into some of the most transformative, some of the most powerful moments that I'm blessed to experience. My life, like each of yours, is a story that's unfolding each and every moment. So I figured that I might as well work to mindfully shape each of the chapters to the best of my ability. You have this power too, though I hope you don't have to go through something like an allergic reaction to realize it. With every single event that happens to each and every one of us, there's lessons to be learned, blessings to be recognized, and growth that is possible. I encourage you to reflect on a situation from your past that maybe you labeled as bad. Now, with the buffer of time, how has your perspective shifted? How did that event help you to grow? What lessons did it contain? How did it help to shape your life into what it is now? I'd love if you share your experience with me in the comments. Through the sharing of our most vulnerable moments, I think that we can find real deep connection with one another. If this sort of content vibes with you, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button for more so that we can continue this journey together. Either way, I'm sending you so much love, my friends. I hope that today you have the best day ever. Bye now.